The Sony ZV-E10 is an incredible camera for creating content. Whether you're wanting to make YouTube videos, vlog, live stream, or even take photos, it's just a great little camera that allows you to do all those things very easily. However, straight out of the box, you're kind of limited with some things. That's why in this video, I'll be breaking down the best accessories for the Sony ZV-E10 so that you can get the most out of it as a user. Let's go. You gotta just press record. Hey, what's up? It's Omar El Takori with Think Media, and I'm so pumped to get into all these accessories. But if you do own the Sony ZV E10, I just wanna let you know that we have a playlist on our channel all dedicated to this camera that we are constantly updating. So make sure to check out that playlist down in the description below, as well as subscribe if you own the Sony ZV E10. And if you plan on using this to do awesome things like grow your YouTube channel, that's another reason why I would encourage you to subscribe to Think Media. So with that being said, I wanna get into the first thing that I would recommend for this and that is for sure just an LCD screen screen protector for this camera now I know the LCD screen does swivel closed and so you can like close it up and then you know you're protecting it this way however maybe you didn't and maybe you don't close it that way and you leave it uh, you know kind of open up in the air you don't want to scratch it and so really for about seven dollars you can get a like a three pack of uh, screen protectors for this camera and I think it'll be super smart to do so especially if you just got it get the screen protector. The next kind of accessory I would encourage you to invest in has to do with holding the camera up. You know, if you buy this camera and you just stack it on books or what have you, you might run the risk of it dropping. So buying something that you can either, you know, set on a table or even vlog with is really cool. The first notable mention is the Sony wireless Bluetooth grip. And this just connects really well with the camera and it gives you a few different options. It gives you the ability to record, to zoom. You can create a custom button and change your modes. Uh, and then this is the lock. But what's cool is that you can totally like rotate it if you need to and it locks into place, uh, which is nice. It does have legs that open up that you can set on a table, but definitely something that would be more used if you were vlogging with the Sony ZV-E10. But I definitely do bring this out when I go with my family vlogging because it's really nice because it really allows me to just have one hand on the camera start and stop record rather than uh, having to reach over with my second hand. I know, that, you know, what are we even talking about? Omar, you can't reach your hand over. I mean. It just makes it nice, okay? It comes in at around $140, which could be pricey, but if you look used on Amazon, like at the time of shooting this video, there's like one for like 90 bucks. So that's a huge discount on something like this, but always be looking at the used deals on Amazon because they protect it and things like that. Other options you can go with when it comes to grips is a switch pod or a gorilla pod. Uh, a gorilla pod has a fli uh, flexible leg system that you can use and wrap around things or choose the height in that regard. Um, that's where that has the upside in regards to the switch pod, but uh, people say it's just not safe all the time because you know these get loose and weak and yada yada yada. The switch pod's awesome. I actually genuinely love it because I love the height it actually sits at uh, when you have it open on a tabletop. Uh, I do have a Joby ball head, but you can get an alternative and go a little bit cheaper. But if I were to choose out of the two of these, I would definitely go switch pod because I love the build quality. It's just a great kind of thing that you can buy. And then the next thing is to get a tripod. I would recommend uh, this newer tripod that I really love because of the arm and the fluid head really allows you to get smooth panning shots and tilt shots and is really just a great overall tripod. And for $90, I think you're getting uh, an awesome thing that'll hold up your camera. And I think it's really important that you get something great to hold up your camera because it's holding up your camera. So you don't wanna like have your camera fall because you're trying to jimmy rig something. Make the investment based off of what you're gonna use the ZV-E10 for, but those are some of my recommendations. But now I just wanna talk about some practical things that you can invest in as far as accessories go. And the first thing are SD cards. SD cards are really key, especially now as cameras have gotten faster. Uh, you wanna get the right SD card, and again, we'll post it down in the description below. But because the Sony ZV-E10 shoots really a uh, high quality video, 4K, as well as the ability to shoot photos really fast and just hold down and burst, you wanna get cards that can keep up with all these demands, I guess you could say. If you have a very slow card, you're not really gonna be able to shoot in the highest resolution, so getting a card that has at least 100 megabytes per second on it is super key. And nowadays, SD cards have become very inexpensive and you can get uh, 128 gigabytes for like 30 something dollars, which I think is really cool. The next thing is to get a USB cable that's long. And one of my favorite features about the Sony ZV-E10 is that it can be a webcam literally by plugging in a USB 
cable, uh, specifically a USB-C cable into the camera, and then whatever computer or laptop you have, the first generation USB or USB-C, but I have my MacBook charger that is USB-C to USB-C, uh, but this is super clutch to be able to put the camera at a certain amount of distance because the, the cord that it comes with uh, isn't really that long. And so I would encourage getting something uh, like this so that you can literally just plug this into your computer and then live stream with your camera by tapping into the live stream camera mode on the ZV-E10. And so that's something I would recommend you getting as well. Now this next accessory may not apply to everybody, but if you plan on vlogging or using your ZV-E10 outside to film, I would encourage you to get what is called an ND filter and specifically a variable ND filter. So what is this? Is It's essentially sunglasses for your lens and it really allows you to get the best settings when you're shooting outside. And so the kit lens that the ZV-E10 comes with is a 3.5 aperture lens, which means at 3.5, you could get some blurry background, but if you don't have an ND filter on the camera when shooting outside, then your video is gonna get really choppy if you still want that blurry background because you're gonna have to crank up the shutter speed and things like that. Getting one of these will definitely take filming outdoors and the quality of your videos filming outdoors to a whole nother level. Just trust me on this one, you'll be super glad you bought it. It's gonna cost you around $30 and I think it's worth it it because you're gonna get incredible video when filming outside. Now let's talk battery and power. The Sony ZV-E10 takes uh, what is called NPFW50 batteries. They're the, the, the little batteries, which I mean, I think is appreciated. It keeps the camera small, but they don't hold the longest battery life. And if you plan on using your ZV-E10 out and about, for long periods of time. You may want to invest into a couple more of these, if not one more of these. However, you could go third party because the OEM version of this is around $50 for just one battery, or you can spend $50 and get a dual battery and charger system from Newer or Newer. How do you even pronounce it, Newer? I'm gonna say Newer, but uh, has great reviews. And I know a lot of times I don't always, I don't always recommend, you know, third party batteries, but when they have great reviews like this one, four out of five stars, 2000 ratings, you're probably good, but I don't know what they do over there and how they make these batteries. And does it really matter? Let me know in the comments if you think it really matters. It might really matter. It might not, I don't know. But um, definitely wanna look into upgrading some more batteries. And while we're on the topic of talking about power, I do wanna bring up getting a continuous power adapter. Now Sony does sell their own version of the adapter. Um, it comes in at around $140, but I feel like you're getting good stuff when you buy the Sony version. It comes with a super long cable, um, but if you go third party, and I'll post the best rated third party uh, continuous power adapter in the description, you're gonna get like, it's, you're gonna get it for like around 30 bucks, which I think is cool. However, I don't know. I, I, feel more com I feel more uncomfortable going third party with continuous power adapters than I do with like the batteries that I just mentioned. Um, but if you plan on using your ZV-E10 to live stream, uh, to batch videos or shoot for a long period of time. You know, the camera doesn't have any recording limit. So if you're shooting video podcasts or long form things, it's really wise to get, uh, you know, one of these. And specifically, I think it's really wise to get the Sony brand because you don't know what it does with like the overheating and things like that. However, this is really cool. I just want to show you. If you put in the battery into uh, the camera itself, like so, uh, what's cool is the battery door actually has this rubber and it allows you to still close the door and feed the cable. Literally, it's like super clean, and if you had this on your desk uh, or, or whatever on a tripod, you don't have to worry about battery when you're filming for long periods of time. But definitely an awesome accessory that could save you time from having to charge different batteries and swap them out and things like that uh, if you plan on using the ZV-E10 in those ways. Now let's talk about audio upgrades when it comes to this camera. Uh, it is important to note that the built-in mic, the one that's like right up on top, this little speaker kind of type thing you see, is a decent mic, like it sounds okay to begin with, especially when you have the wind muff put onto the cold shoe, um, that it does sound a, a little bit better with this on. And so if you're just getting started, 100% use the onboard mic. However, what uh, was cool about the Sony ZV-E10 is they've added what is called the multi-interface shoe, which essentially is a smart shoe that detects some of the things that they've created, like mics. And so the first thing is uh, like this shotgun mic, which I'm not even gonna try and name the model number of it, but this is a shotgun mic that they make. It's about $100, or you could shop used because this isn't a new product. But when you throw it onto the Sony ZV-E10, the Sony ZV-10 will automatically uh, acknowledge this mic and then start taking audio from here without having to plug in anything into the camera itself, which is super cool. 
And I'll do an audio test comparing all these mics uh, in just a second. But I do think this is really cool. However, the con to it is that you can't really control your input gain. Once this is on, it kind of like overrides and it's just like, no, let me, let me decide. But it definitely sounds good, especially if you're vlogging. Um, and so as far as convenience goes, I mean like this whole setup right here is kind of a vibe. Like you got the wireless grip that's gonna start and suppress record. And then you got the wireless mic that has no cable going into the camera, which is really cool. This isn't the only uh, mic they make. They, they make a few other ones. The other one costs around $400, which is kind of expensive for something like this, in my opinion. Uh, another con to this is you, you can't really boom this mic. So unless you have a special cable extender thing that um, relays it, you can't really boom this mic if you wanted to use it like I'm using this mic up here. Um, but all that to say, that is an option. The other option, is their wireless lab solution. This is called the ECM W2BT, and this is a wireless lab mic that literally goes onto the camera, and literally without having to plug in anything, you're able to capture wireless audio, and kind of their uh, lavalier setup is is uh, is like this shaped, if, as you can see, but you can literally like clip it onto your shirt like this, or flip it around obviously to be a little more subtle. Kind of like the Rode Wireless Go, but you know, not having to plug in anything. So again, a very uh, convenient way of using audio uh, with this camera. But really, I could see that Sony's trying to create an ecosystem of convenience when it comes to using all their products, which I appreciate. However, because it's coming from them, it usually is priced a little high, and then as well as maybe limited features because they're not their sole focus isn't trying to create the best lavalier wirelessly, right? But definitely good enough, in my opinion, if you're really trying to go for that convenience route. Now, if you wanted to save some money but still upgrade the audio, you can go with little shotgun mics like these, which I'm a big fan of, uh, specifically Deity ones. Like the, the Deity D4 Mini and the D4 Duo are incredible mics, and not to get too deep into them, uh, this is just a your, your know, traditional shotgun mic, comes in at around $50 and will level up the audio. Also comes with a dead cat, but isn't that subtle if you're around vlogging with this thing. However, I mean, if it's windy, then by all means use this. Uh, and then the second one is the D4 Duo, which specifically for vlogging, uh, now, like I mentioned, this is $50. The Duo is $90, and that is because you can pick up audio from the front and the back, and then it'll put it in the left and the right channel of the audio or the video file clip. You'll just have to in post kind of tweak the audio to make sure that it's coming out of both speakers. But for vlogging, this is really cool because when you turn the camera away from you, you're no longer speaking into the mic and that's why they made this mic. They made this mic because if I'm if I'm vlogging this way and then I turn around the camera, it's still gonna pick up. And some people, based off of the type of content you're capturing, may need that feature. But these are two audio upgrades that will definitely level up the audio of the ZV-E10, uh, specifically when vlogging, or you can boom these mics. So that's another maybe reason you would wanna go with one of these. But let's jump into some audio tests so that you can see the difference between them all. And I'll put the price as well, just so you can let me know down in the comments if you think these upgrades are worth it. All right, so for audio test number one, this is the onboard mic of the ZV-E10. Uh, I am outside in my backyard. That's my house right there. Just kidding, it's my daughter's house. Just kidding, that's not her house either. That'd be kind of cruel. Anyway, I got the wind muff uh, that's on top. I'm about arm's length distance uh, from the camera, and so this is what you would get straight out of the box. The next thing I wanna do the sound test on is the Sony branded shotgun mic that has no cables. So let's plug this in and see how that sounds. So now you're listening to the Sony shotgun mic on the multi-interface. I got nothing plugged into the camera. It's pretty cool uh, that you don't have to worry about the volume settings and that it's just like auto adjusting. Uh, maybe that isn't cool based off of how it sounds um, But the model number of this or the model name is the Sony ECM GZ1M gun uh, zoom microphone and uh, At $98 or you know used on Amazon. I'm looking right now There's a $70 one on Amazon right now, but let me know what you think this sounds like uh, in comparison to the onboard mic uh, I definitely love the cleanness of it. And again, I'm just outside in my backyard the next one I wanna try are the lav mics that still hook up to the uh, multi-interface of the Sony camera, and let's see how that sounds. So now you're listening to the wireless uh, lav system of, from Sony. It's clipped onto my jacket right here, and just like the other one, you don't really get to control the input volume or your gain on the camera. However, there's three levels on the actual uh, mic itself. You have 
zero, negative 10, and negative 20. Right now I have it on negative 20 because I don't want to peak. And so uh, based off of how I'm talking right now is what it sounds like on negative 20 decibels. And uh, let me know what you think about this. This is a $230 mic. Maybe the Rode Wireless Go, which is about the same price, may, may sound better. Uh, but the convenience factor of, again, nothing into the camera uh, could be something you want. But let me know what you think about this sound and if you prefer it from the last upgrade. So now you're listening to the Deity D4 Mini, a $50 mic uh, with my volume uh, gain set to about 14. Again, I'm about arm's length distance, kind of like if I was just vlogging uh, distance. And uh, I think this probably sounds really good. However, it's just a lot going on, which if you're okay with, I think it's cool. And for the price, you're getting a great sounding audio upgrade. Now, I'm gonna turn the camera around and then I'm just gonna continue to talk so you can get a vibe so that when we do try the duo, that you can see the difference. So right now I am talking to the camera, but I am turning the camera away from me and you're seeing how overexposed my backyard is. Um, nonetheless, this is what it sounds like. And then as I turn it back toward me, this is the audio when the mic's facing you. So now let's try the Deity D4 Duo and see how it sounds. So now you're listening to the Deity Duo, a $90 mic that has two mics on it. This is the front mic and in post, I actually had to duplicate my audio uh, from the left channel to the right channel, just so you, whatever device you're listening to or you know audio, headphones or whatever, it's coming out of both speakers. But I'm gonna flip this around so you can get what it sounds like when I flip it around, uh, unlike mini which doesn't have a mic in the back or any other mic I tested so right now you're listening to the mic that's in the back of the camera and you're looking at my backyard uh, kind of overexposed but what a vibe and this is what it sounds like from the back camera and something nice if you plan on sh uh, showcasing things if you plan on you know holding the camera yourself and actually talking while you're you know facing the camera away from you so that you don't have to uh, lose out on audio quality. Uh, if you're in a room, it'll get really echoey. But based off of everything I tested, which one do you like best based off of price and uh, quality um, and preference as well? Or are you big on the convenience factor? Let me know down in the comments what you thought about all these audio tests. But let's jump back into the office to talk about some more accessories. So those are kind of how those mics sound and you can definitely increase the video quality of your camera by increasing the audio quality of your camera. You'd be surprised. We like to say that 50% of video is audio. So definitely think about upgrading your audio solution when it comes to using your Sony ZV-E10. Now, if you don't have a bag to put your Sony ZV-1 in, I want to encourage you to potentially get something. I love this uh, Peak Design sling bag. I've had it for about like uh, I think two or three years now, and it still is as good as new. Uh, Amazon makes some alternative ones that are more affordable. Um, and there's also the ability to, to get kind of like a camera bag to put in your bag. And this is a very inexpensive way to protect your camera, but still use uh, maybe your purse or your backpack. Uh, or maybe your book bag or something. And so it just creates some padding around the camera itself. Definitely something to look into, but I hope you got value in this video. And if you did, hit that like button. If you wanna check out another video on the Sony ZV-E10, you can click or tap the screen. And I can't wait to see you in a future video. Peace.